Okay, so uh, listening challenges this week. You just need to pick any news broadcast. Um, and usually in the news, they speak clearly and they speak a standard English, which is why it's good for you to watch and listen. Um, I know they speak really fast, but my recommendation is for you not to use subtitles and just listen for words and you're listening for the modals may, might, and could and any counter argument words like however, on the other hand, despite this and others like that. If you hear any of those, I want you to try to write the sentence that they, they say or as much of the sentence as you can catch. And then we'll talk about it next week and you can share um, whatever you found, but you do not have to turn it into me. Okay. It's just pra practice for you. Um, so let me kind of review what's coming up next week. Next week, we're going to focus on preparing our practice speeches and presenting them either in collaborate here in the video or in go react in blackboard. Okay. There is a link I provided in Blackboard that says practice chapter two. And if you want to do the Go React video and do it there, you can record your speech there. Um, but on Monday and Wednesday of next week, I'm going to give extra time for students to give their speeches in the class here. And I can give you immediate feedback and, uh, you know, give you suggestions and all that. And besides that, we're just going to be finishing the chapter. We've got a couple more pages to do. So it won't be a, a really tough lesson as far as the book next week. It's mostly just getting your speeches ready and prepared and doing those. And I'm adding a new element to your practice speeches. I want everybody to listen to two other students' speeches, and I would like for you to give feedback to, the, to um, those students. So in the lessons folder this week, um, in the lessons folder, you will find I posted an eight minute video and I walked through the whole assignment with you so you can see where to go. And I even gave my own practice speech, which is really funny <laughs> because I didn't have any notes or anything, <laughs> but I talked about solar energy. Um, so you guys can go and watch my funny speech, but I wanted you to see how to give the speech and it's it's short it's simple but it has a main idea you're going to have your supporting details and um, make sure you have your counter argument and um, signpost that sort of thing and then a conclusion okay so really it should only take you about two minutes of speaking i don't want you to speak more than four and a half minutes OK, it becomes too long and we need to try to keep it short, simple and clear. OK, so after you record your speech or after you do your speech here in Collaborate, we're going to give feedback to two other classmates. OK, so remember, we have about three classmates that do not come to the video lessons here. Um, so we want to include them and watch their videos and give feedback. And I showed you how to do that in the little video that I posted, that little eight minute video. I showed you how to type comments in Go React and what kind of comments to type and all that. So it will give you a chance to look at how other people give speeches and maybe you can get some ideas, um, look at what was good and what wasn't good. And uh, we'll discuss that together okay so that's what's coming up next week you're going to give a speech and you're going to give feedback or comments on two other classmates speeches
Okay. Any questions about what's coming up next week? Everybody, okay, so raise your hand if you have a question. Otherwise, we are going to open our books. And I want to show you the topics that you can pick from. So this weekend, your, your homework is going to be to pick your topic from chapter two and make an outline for your speech, okay? So um, I'll give you the full homework assignment at the end of this lesson, but I wanted to show you really quick in your book where you can find the topics. Okay, so let's look at chapter two, starting on page 39. You could do um, the question number one at the bottom. Okay, if you guys look at that, it says, do you agree or disagree with the statement? Um, the government of my country should build more sources of alternative en energy. So you see it has the word should. So that means this is an argument. This is an opinion topic. So you could pick this one and talk about your country and or your native country and your uh, what you suggest for them as far as the energy. And flip over to page 45. This is where we can also find a couple more topics if you want. Page 45, section 4 at the bottom. Okay, that you could choose any of those. Topics one through four at the bottom. Like farming in the desert solves the food of the problem of the of food crisis. Not using fossil fuels reduces global warming. Um, so you can just pick any of those if you'd like to. Don't forget to use the I believe that or something like um, should, should not. And then flip over to page 49. There's a couple more topics. Um, page 49 at the bottom, discussion topics two or three. Okay, page 49 at the bottom, discussion topic two or three. Both of those are opinion topics you can use as an argument topic. Okay, and the last possible choice would be page 50, shopping mall. It's shopping mall topic on the, bo on the top. It says argue for or against building a new shopping mall in your city. Okay, so that gives you about seven or eight different topics to pick from. And um, so next week you're going to um, prepare and give your speech about one of those topics. Okay, anybody have questions about this? Just click on the raise your hand button. Okay, Carolina, go ahead. Teacher, um, the number 45 page, um, mm -hmm. it's the, it could be the last four, like farming in the desert. Those yes. Ones? Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Right. And remember, you have to change it to your own sentence. Like, I believe that, number three, I believe that taxing fossil fuels will reduce uh, the use of cars. Or you can say, I believe that we should tax fossil fuels more in this country you know you kind of have to you know make you, you can't just say oh this is my topic right here number three you know you kind of change it a little bit but yeah this is this is where we get our ideas ideas from you can pick any type of alternative energy and kind of support that like i believe wind energy is the best way to get um 
power in our city. You know, you can choose that. Or I believe solar energy. In the in my practice speech that I posted in Go React, I chose solar energy, but I argued against it. Um, I said that I I don't think that solar energy should be used in our city, and then I gave my reasons. So you can argue for or against any of these topics. Okay, okay, guys, um, ladies, let's go ahead and check our answers to the homework. Page fifty-one. Page fifty-one. I'm going to share my screen. And your homework was to do the bottom of page 51. And we're going to do a little practice with this today. Uh, so we're going to practice taking one side of the issue and then giving our argument and a counter argument. OK, so we'll do that a little bit today to kind of get an idea of how to do that. Um, remember, you can click on the magnifying glass on the top left of your screen. So you can zoom in here to see the answers. Okay, so these were your ideas for or against a shopping mall. So let's see what you got. Um, actually, you know what they did here? I'm going to circle what they're doing here. Um, right here, they're giving you the answers to the top. These are possible answers to the top of page 51. Advantages of a shopping mall. They're fun, gives, other, gives people another place to buy things, and it's good for the economy. We talked in our last class that um, it would bring jobs, so that's, that's one of the advantages. The disadvantages of a shopping mall are that it's ugly, it's bad for the environment, and it competes with local stores. So local stores will lose business if we have a shopping mall. OK, so those are some advantages and disadvantages. Now, I want to see what you guys put down at the bottom. Let's start with the argument for a shopping mall. This means that we agree. We think that, yes, we need to have a shopping mall in our city. Can someone share with me your argument for it? What did you say? Anybody want to share what you put um, in favor of having a shopping mall? What is your argument? Yes. My out. Yeah, go ahead. So, Lon, you can go first, and then Carolina. Okay, go ahead, Lon. Yes, my argument is um, that create the job in my um, area. Okay. Yep. So it can create jobs in my area. Mm -hmm. How can we make that into a complete sentence? Like, let's pretend that we're giving a speech. How would Is is my is I think this it may be uh, create the job in my area. Okay, good. It may create a job in my area. And don't forget we might want to have a signpost at the beginning, like first of all. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just typing some ideas up here. So maybe for a main idea sentence, we can say, I am for building a shopping mall in my city. So when we say, I am for, that's the same thing as, I agree. So I am for is the same as I agree with building a shopping mall in my city. 
Okay, so there's more than one way to say it. This is just an idea. You can also start with, I believe that we should build a shopping mall in my city, right? So there's three examples right there of how to create a main idea sentence. Um, so this is clearly, if you notice, the main idea is clearly stating that uh, what your opinion is. So we don't have to wonder, oh, I wonder if she's saying she wants it or not, right? You have to make it clear. And then um, in the supporting sentences, as Bon said, she said it, and we have a signpost at the front, right? First of all, it, and you said may bring, may is not very strong. Maybe we could change it to will bring <laughs> more jobs. Is that what you said, Lon? It, it may bring more jobs? Yes, yes. Okay. We could use a will just to show that, uh, that we're more certain, right? Because we're trying to convince everybody of our point. So we have a little signpost there to show, hey guys, this is our first, this is my first point, this is my first reason. We put first of all, and then we've got our subject and verb. It will bring more jobs. Okay, so that's kind of a little taste of what your speech will be like. You've got your main idea, you've got um, supporting points, and you want to have at least two or three supporting points, two or three reasons why um, something should happen, okay? Okay, Carolina, what's another example of an argument for? Um, I write, I am agree with building a shopping mall because it could be a place to get fun every time you go. Hey, that sounds great. Um, so for you, you put, um, it looks like you put your supporting point into your main idea because you gave us the reason why. Okay. So we want to separate those just because we have a main idea, which is our opinion, and then we're going to have three reasons or two, okay. and those will be separate sentences. But you have the right, you have the right idea about topic. So you're saying, um, I agree with. And make sure you say, I agree, not I am agree. Okay. I agree. Yeah. So I agree with having a shopping mall. Um, first of all, it will create or bring more fun opportunities. Bring more fun opportunities to our area or to our city. Yeah. So that was for your argument for. So we've got we've got the economic reason, like the jobs. We've got fun. Fun is one of the another reason. Yeah, everybody likes to go to malls, right? It's fun. You get to look around, you meet with friends, they have movie theaters there. They so that's a good argument. Okay, let's do one on the other side. Let's do the arguments against. Arguments against. Okay, who would like to share an argument against? What would be one reason? What about you, Lucia? Kind of quiet over there. I know you had some reception problems. Do you want to share with us? She might still have reception problems. No problem, Lucia. Can you share one of your arguments against having? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I believe that having a shopping mall in my city 
can make the start traffic light. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I believe that having a shopping mall in my city will and will do what? What did you say? We'll make tra start traffic light. Oh, will make people get stuck. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, How about this? Can we be a little bit more general? It will create more traffic. Oh. Which is kind of the same idea, right? Yes. But it's a little more general. Like maybe it's traffic on the highway and also traffic at the stop lights, you know. Yeah. We can include kind of all traffic. So I believe that having a shopping mall in my city will create more traffic. Yeah, that's a good one. Okay. Does anybody want to try here and give us a main idea sentence for being against a shopping mall? Okay, Carolina, go ahead. I am against of building a shopping mall. First of all, it could affect the environment. Okay, I like that. So, and we do, we're not going to have four here because four is like at the four building a shopping mall. The argument against, notice how it's a little bit different. It's just, I am against building a shopping mall, but there's no four. Okay, so good. it's a very simple sentence, but it's very clear and we understand your opinion. So that's what we want. I am against building a shopping mall. And then you gave us another reason, uh, another argument. Um, first of all, it could be bad for the environment. Yes. Good. Okay. Now, let's take this a step further, ladies, and let's talk about the counter arguments. The counter arguments. So, the argument for means that um, we want to have the shopping mall jobs. What would be the counter argument? Do we add a counter argument? If I'm if I'm for, but I want to share the other side of the uh, the topic, which means other people who believe another thing. How can I share that? Any ideas? You need, you need some help? Look at page 55. I want to show you a couple of ways that we can use counter arguments or, or use the language here. Page 55 in your book. Kind of look at the top under number three. Page number three. It says prepare some notes counter arguments. You can use language like this. And here are three things that we can use. We can say it may be true that, and then we give the the other side of the uh, topic. However, and then we give our side. We we give our point. Okay. Let me show you how this one up here. I'll do it in red color. So counter argument would be. Okay, so look at this one. It may be true that shopping take business away from other small stores in the area, right? You remember that was one of the um, the book earlier. 
the answer key. Okay, so that's the other side, maybe um, opposing view. So then we're going to say that, but then we come back and we we come back with our point. However, the mall will create many more jobs for other unemployed people in our city. Okay. So, um, raise your hand if you have a question about this and what this means or why we're using this. This is what we call a counter argument. Okay. Okay, so, so what we've got is we've got one side, um, another opposing view, and then we come back and we say, uh, but or however or despite that, and then we share our side, our point of view. Okay, so in your speech, I want you to have just one counter argument. Okay. You don't need to do counter arguments for all of your supporting points. We just put one in there and that would be good. Okay. Does anybody want to try to do a counter argument for the, oops, I just totally crossed that out. Sorry. <laughs> Does anybody do a counter argument for the, the bottom? Anybody want to try? Um, down here under this line. So for the counter argument, we want to say something that is for having a shopping mall. We can start with it may be true. And then we want to share our point of view by saying, however, or despite that, Okay, we've got Carolina and Lon here. Any two of you here? Lucia's having connection problems. So, do any could either of you just give this one a try? We want to try to give a counter argument. Yes, teacher. Okay, go ahead. It may be true that building a shopping mall um, could improve economics. However, mm -hmm. um, it will create more traffic. Hey, I like that. And I'm going to use here the, the modal could, sh uh, may, or might. So it may be true that a shopping mall could improve economy. OK, so that's one sentence. And then we give the counter argument. However, um, uh, it will in increase traffic. Mm -hmm. So we're going to kind of try to stay on the same idea. Like if we're talking about economy, we might want to keep it with something that's going to be positive here with the economy. Um, but it will increase traffic and maybe we can how can we tie this into the economy? Mm -hmm. um, well, maybe we we'll just leave it like that. You can explain more. It will increase traffic. So we've got something positive about the mall, but we want to come back and prove our point that, hey, the, the bad part about the mall is way more or it's more convincing so that's what we want to do with the counter argument we're we're showing that we understand the other side of the topic or the other opinion but we want to come back with some strong points to prove our side 
Okay, that's going to be challenging to do counter arguments. I know that, but hopefully this little setup here gives you a start to how you can at least start your speeches. If you guys want a really, uh, if you want to start out really simple and easy, you might want to just go ahead and choose the shop topic and you can use some of these ideas here. Um, or if you want it to be a little more challenging, you can go and pick a different topic, but you can still use some of the words that I mentioned here. Like, don't forget to use signpost, these little words in your uh, main idea sentences, and then don't forget to use things like it may be true that, however, okay? So, any questions about this? No, teacher. Okay, good. And Lucia, I know you had some connection problems there, but don't worry, I'm recording this video, so you can always go back. Um, let's go yes, ahead and... Teacher, I, I think the problem is that uh, my computer is, I don't know, it's uh, doing something wrong. <laughs> That's okay. Blame it on the weather. It's been rainy lately. Everything's going crazy. Um, we are going to look yeah. at... Yeah, we're going to do page 52 together to look at some more ways to use these transition words and phrases. So let's go over to page 52. Oops, and I need to share my screen with you guys. Hold on a second. Okay, so I'm going to give you more tools to help you use uh, or create a good speech for your arguments uh, speech. Okay, so we're on page 52, and we're going to do a couple of these activities together and finish over there on page 54 or 55, okay? So let's start with transitions. Um, at the top of your page, it says linking ideas with transition words and phrases. This is kind of like signposts, right? If you look in the box, the orange box on page 52, we have some of those signposts like to begin with, second. We could also add, um, first of all, we've talked about those signposts before, but what they're doing is they're just kind of um, making, giving you more examples of different types of words. And so don't get confused with, oh, is it a transition? Is it a signpost? It's called a transition word and phrase, but the purpose is to be a signpost, okay? So there are four categories. Um, when you want to explain a sequence of ideas, you want to use things like first of all, to begin with, second, or another, like another reason, you could use that as well. And when you want to compare and contrast ideas, we can use these kind of words here in the second column. It's despite that, in contrast, although. Okay, and then again, adding another idea. Um, also, what's more in addition? And then to summarize ideas, we use those four on the far right all in all or in short. So here's my point. Um, several kinds of signals can be used in an argument to help organize your ideas and present them well so that your listener can follow you easily and they can understand what you're trying to say. So here's a structure that I want to give you that you can use in your speech, okay? So first you state your main idea and then you can use one of these words from the list, like to begin with, give your first point. Okay, and then you're going to start the counter argument. It may be true that, and you give that uh, counter argument, and then you come back and share your point. However, and then you share that second point. And then you wanna go to your third point. 
in addition, so that's the, the signal there, in addition, and then of course you want to explain if there needs to be some more explanation, and then at the end of your speech you use this one, in short, and you give a conclusion. So in the whole speech it will take you about two minutes two to three minutes okay so we're giving a lot more information but this is a basic structure and you can see I'm using five different signals in the speech okay I've got about five different signals that I'm using so that's kinda what I want you to use in your speech I want to hear some of these words from the chart on page 52 so why don't we do this together I want us to do the bottom of page 52 and we're going to try to figure out which signal to use in the sentences so we've got to look at the relationship between the ideas so let me show you with number one it says in my opinion nuclear energy is safe then we have a choice of although or also and then we have the rest of the sentence. It's cheap and clean. So the first thing we do is we need to figure out are we adding a similar idea or are we contrasting and showing something different? What do you guys think? And number one, is, are we adding a new idea, like a similar or new idea, or are we contrasting the first sentence with the second sentence. Adding teacher. You think we're adding, okay? Adding. Does anybody? Yeah, go ahead. Adding another idea to is also. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hey, yeah, you guys are correct. We want to circle also, but a little further and explain why. We're looking for clues on the left side and the right side. On the left side, I see the word safe. Safe is something that's good. It is safe. So I make a note. Okay, this is something good. On the right side, I see cheap and clean. Those are also positive things. So I have good things on the left and good things on the right. That means I, use, I need to use also. I'm adding similar ideas. If I say, if I my sentence says, in my opinion, nuclear energy is safe, and then I say it's not cheap, it's not cheap, then I would use a different I would probably use however, it's not cheap, because not cheap is something bad. So uh, we need to look for the, the meaning, the relationship meaning there. So let's go to number two. And let's see, um, Lucia, are you still there? Yes, teacher, I'm here. All right, you're back. Okay, Lucia, can you do number two? Just read and then you can pick which transition you want to use. Thanks. It's solar energy is an unlimited source of energy. On the other hand, it's safe and envi environmentally friendly. Okay, and why did you choose on the other hand? Oh, because it's, um, the first part for me is complete. The first idea, solar energy is an unlimited source of energy. Yeah, that is complete. This is complete. And it's safe and, it's safe and environmentally friendly. It's, um, oh, well, we are talking of the same thing, but um, it's, oh, it's an idea that we have to, that we want to include, but not in addition. Okay, so let's look no. at the difference. 
you're you're sort of on the right confusion here. Um, okay. On the other hand, if you look on the chart in the orange box and the blue boxes too, okay. on, the, on the other hand is to con contrast. The comparison word is just in comparison. That's the only one that compares similarities. But okay. the other one's contrast. In contrast, although, but, and on the other hand, those are all used to show different differences, opposites. Okay. Uh, okay. And then the word in addition is on where the column where it says to add another idea. And we use that if it's a similar idea. It's kind of remember number one, we have positive on the left, positive good thing on the right. We used also. Yes. We could also use in addition in number one. So so again, let's look at, okay, are, are these positive things or negative things? Solar energy is an unlimited source of energy. That is very positive. Mm -hmm. Unlimited source would be great for us, right? Um, but, and then it also says on the right, safe and environmentally friendly. Are those positive things or negative things? Positive. Yeah. So we've got left, right side positive. So which transition do we need to use, Lucia? Oh. Okay, now in addition. Yeah, it's going to be in addition um, yeah. because we're adding more positive things, positive things to other positive things. Okay. Okay. Okay, yeah. thank you, teacher. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. So, uh, good job. Let's go to number three. And um, Carolina, can you do number three? Read it and tell us the answer there. Yes, teacher. Wine turbines don't destroy Wind. the landscape. Mm -hmm. Despite that, they can be dangerous for birds. It's despite that? Um, yes, I'm just my answer key. It says what's more, but I think maybe despite that, let me see. I think uh, don't yes. destroy it's a positive thing, and I think, yeah, I, I think, think it, I think despite, despite that, yeah, despite I think that's a mistake in the answer key again. Um, just Yes, I agree. I believe it despite that because it says something positive. They don't destroy the landscape. On the right side, we have something that's negative. They can be dangerous for birds. Yes. So we've got contrast here. We want good job. Okay, um, Lan, can you do number four? Yes. There are many reasons. Why well, we should build a solar power plant to begin with. Solar energy is affordable and safe. Okay, so this is the first time so far that we're we're not using the in addition also, like we're not using the two columns in the middle of the chart. You wanted to use um, to, begin to begin with. So why would we? Why would you use that one? What's the difference between that one and using the in addition? Like, tell us, tell us why you did that. The the first sentence seem like the the topic. The yes. Main topic, and then um, the second one is like sporting detail. That's good. Great job, Lon. This is a good practice for looking at general and specific. So uh, if I were you, I would underline the words many reasons. Okay. That's a clue right there that we're talking about something general. This would be like a main idea sentence. 
there are many reasons why we should. You see that word should too, right? That's my, this means this sentence. So that sentence is, is general. We do not want to use in addition because in addition means we're adding another supporting point. But we're not, uh, the first part is not a supporting point. It's more like the main idea. So we want to use the transition to begin with because solar, in, where it says solar energy is affordable and safe, that's the first supporting point in my speech. So I want to start with to begin with or first of all. Okay, good job. Any questions on that? Okay, no. let's one more and then we're going to make it more challenging. Okay, let's do one more. Number five. Um, let's see, who wants to try this one? Either Carolina or Lucia. Who wants to try it? Me, teacher. Okay, Lucia. Okay. Go ahead. Um, I think the nuclear power plants look ugly and destroy the landscape. First, I think that nuclear power plants look ugly and destroy the landscape. And uh, what's more, finally? finally, they don't always provide jobs for local people. Teacher, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I'm just reading it ah. to see because I have something different here. Yes. Oh. What's I think it's what's more. At the end. Yes, I think it's what more. What's more? You think what's more? Yeah, yes, that's I what I'm. What's more too. That's what I'm thinking. We wanted Lucia to get this. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, this is kind I of am tricky. wrong. <laughs> but it's okay, Lucia. Uh, we learn from mistakes. Yeah, that's right. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, Lan. Yeah. I love mistakes in my class. That means I'm actually teaching you something instead of telling you what you already know. Okay, so let's talk about why what's more is better. If we use finally, um, finally, Lucia, that means this is our last point, right? This is our last supporting point. But we just we just said our first point, right? Because you said first, I think that nuclear power plants look ugly and destroy the landscape. If you say finally, then that means, okay, the speech is over. I'm done. I'm done sharing all my points. I only have yeah. first and I have finally, guys. That's all I've got for you. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> We're not done yet. Yeah, it's because I don't need to to tell you another thing. <laughs> right, right. So, <laughs> but we want to have more points. We want to have more ideas. So, um, if we use what's more, it's kind of like saying also or in addition, right? It means we're not done uh, with our speech yet. We're going to keep sharing more ideas. So you want to have like three supporting points. So first of all, dot, 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 and then in addition, and then dot, 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 share your second point. And then you can use the finally. Okay. Okay, good. That's Thank a, you. It's okay, Lucia. We're going to give you another chance to, to do this, okay? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, what we're going to do on page 53 is I want to do just the first part. We're going to do A and B, which is numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 at the top of page 53. And then we're going to skip over and look at... Um, try and counter argument again okay so here's what I want us to do I'm I'm going to give you about three or four minutes and I want you to read 
um, the sentences, part A and part B, on the top of page 53. Uh, it says, read the excerpts from a discussion about building a nuclear power plant near a city. Complete the excerpts with words and phrases from the box. So again, it's kind of like what we just did, except it's a little bit more information. We're looking for the relationship between the ideas, and then we're going to pick the words from the box at the top and put them in the blanks. But we're only going to do number two, three, four, and five, and we'll stop at five. Okay, any questions? All right, go ahead, guys. I'll give you about four or five minutes just to read and do this on your own, and then we will come back to Lucia and see if she can help us with some of these, okay? So take a few minutes. Okay.
Okay, I'll give you about one more minute and then we'll put some answers up on the whiteboard. We're just doing two, three, four, and five. Okay, so Lucia, you're going to put number two answer on the whiteboard. Carolina, okay. you're going to do number three. And Lun, could you do number four and five, please, on the whiteboard? Okay, we're waiting on Lucia's answer. Pick something from the box. Okay, teacher. Number two, I wrote first of all. Okay, there it is. Okay. All right, so before I give the answers, or before we check these, I want you to go back through. Um, you can see it kind of flows like it's it's um, a, a speech. You know, they're giving you a whole chunk of speech here. So in part A, where it has number one and two, there somewhere in there is a counter argument. Did you guys find the counter argument in part A? Anybody want to share what it what sentence it is? I'm sorry, teacher. I don't understand you. Which, which page? We're still on page 53, and we're in part A at the top, where we have number one and two. And in those sentences, somewhere is a counter argument. And I want to see if you were able to find it. I want you to underline the counter argument at the top of page 53. Can anybody find the counter argument? It's going to be the, the part of the speech that is against what the speaker really believes. Teacher, it's, uh, I understand that modern nuclear power plants are safer. Yeah, that's it. That's the counter argument. Now, how did you know that's a counter argument? Because after that, it says, however, I worry about my children. Yes. Okay. So here's another idea. Let's go back to the main idea. It says, I would like to say that I completely disagree. Right there, that is the speaker's opinion. I disagree with the idea of building a nuclear power plant. So what they're saying is that they're giving a big X, like, hey, no nuclear power plant in my city, right? And then it says, to begin with, I understand that modern nuclear power plants are safer. Safer is something that's positive. Um, so this is opposite 
of what the speaker believes. This is opposite of what the speaker is trying to argue. Um, the speaker is trying to say, hey, I disagree. I don't like the power plant here. Um, but they did mention, hey, we I understand that it's safer than it used to be. OK, so that right there is like a, um, an alert to you that you need to see this is a counter argument because it has that word safer. That is that is the opposite view or the opposite um, opinion of the speaker. OK, does everybody see that? Are there any questions about that? OK, and we also like Carolina said, we have the word however, which is a signal to us. Hey, this is a counter argument. So nuclear power plant, they believe, yeah, OK, nuclear power plants have, are safer than they used to be. And the plant would be far from our houses. However, I worry about my children. You see, now we're back to, hey, I don't want it. It's yes. not good. it's not good for my children. And then it says they'll be exposed to radiation. So being ex I want you to circle the word safer and I want you to circle be exposed to radiation. These two sentences are giving you opposite ideas. We've got safer and then we've got exposed to radiation, which is not safe. So this is a good counter argument. OK. Is everybody thumbs up with that? I can't see your thumbs, but you have thumbs up. Do you understand this? I understand. OK, Lucia, what about you? Are you with me? I don't know where Lucia went. <laughs> Okay, I'm just typing here to help um, people kind of check it. So I asked you to, um, in just a moment, we're going to be writing our own counter arguments. Okay, so that's why right here, I want you to just notice what we're doing. We circle the word safer. And then we come over here and we circle exposed to radiation. OK, um, that's not good. Here's my drawing of my little face here. It doesn't look like a face, but that's a that's a sad face. So we've got something positive and then something negative. That's showing you right here. It's a counter argument. OK, so let's go back to number two and Lucia is correct. Oh wait, no, Lucia is not correct. And she just got kicked out <laughs> because of reception. Okay, she'll come back. Okay, Lucia, um, good try on this, but first of all is not correct. On number two. Well, she can't get in, guys. OK, we're just going to have to write the answer here. So who has a correct answer for number two? However. However. However, yes. Yeah, because once again, we're giving this is where the counter argument is. And this is why it's so important for us to be able to recognize the meaning and to be clear in our own speeches, because if we're using however, and but it's not a counter argument, then it will be confusing. If we're using first of all, but we're trying to give a counter argument, like first of all, I worry about my children, that would be confusing because we just said something is safer. And so it was confusing to say, first of all, I worry about my children that they'll be exposed to radiation. So we need to change number two to um, however. And then number three, first of all, number four, second, and number five, overall. 
That's correct. Okay, so I'm going to let you guys finish the rest for homework. I want you to flip over to page 54, and this will be the last thing that we do today. Page 54, where it says giving counter arguments. Okay, so now it's time for you guys to write your own counter arguments. Now, remember what we said, remember what I just wrote over here. Um, when we have a counter argument, we want to have a word like here I put our safer, and then we have the counter argument is continuing with hey, exposed to radiation, which is the opposite of safer. Okay, so look at number one. I want you to circle the word on the left side or the first sentence. And I want you to circle a word that means the opposite thing in uh, the second sentence. Okay, so we have people often say that nuclear energy is dangerous. I want you to circle the um, adjective, the, the word that is describing nuclear energy. And then it says, however, it is actually very safe. So I want you to circle the word that's the opposite of the first word you circled, just like we did on the whiteboard screen here. Okay, this will help us recognize we're, we're showing opposite information. So let's see, Lan, what did you circle in number one? Uh, dangerous and safe. Yes, so number one on page 54, giving counter arguments, I want you to circle dangerous and circle safe. Circle dangerous and circle safe. They are opposite. So that is a signal. This is a good counter argument. All right, guys, um, we have about five or 10 minutes left. I want you to do two, three, and four. I'll give you a couple minutes just to think about it and write your own. Uh, remember that you need to include one of the words in the, or one of the phrases in the red box. And then you need to continue your sentence and pick an opposite word or an opposite idea from the first part, just like they did in number one. Okay, so go ahead. I'll give you about five minutes and then we'll check our answers.
Okay, we have about two minutes left. If anybody wants to write or uh, finish the sentences, number two, three, or four, you can pick one, and then we'll check them together. Take your time. Okay, everybody, it's been about five minutes. Um, I want to see what you came up with to finish these sentences. Um, I kind of helped you out a little bit. I circled for each of these, I circled the opinion words on the left side of the counter argument. And then your job is to write something that's going to show the opposite, the opposing idea of these words that I circled. So does anybody want to try? Do you, um, do you want to pick number two, three, or four? So Lan, which one do you want to do? Uh, number three or four, it's okay. Okay, uh, why don't you do number three? And you can just type your answer. We'll, we'll check it after you type it. And Carolina, do you want to do number two? Yes, teacher. Okay, so go ahead and type it. Okay, you guys are typing up there, right? Okay, I see it. Okay, number two looks good. Double check your subject and verb. Make sure there's a subject verb agreement. Because I see panels 
and I see needs. Okay, teacher. So it's solar panel panels need? Yes. Okay. Okay. Okay, so it's looking good and I'll do number four. All right, so let's talk about these. Um, number two, some people say that solar power is the best kind of energy and then we got to share our point of view. So we'll say, I'm not sure that's completely true. Then we share our point of view. Solar panels need um, a big land space, um, a lot of land, or a lot of space. I would probably say a lot. Okay. Yeah, because that would go better with space and land. So, yes, that's a good point. So, solar power is the best kind of energy? No, because it needs... It takes up a lot of space. You could also say that. I'm going to put that under here. Solar panels take up a lot of space. And that's funny you say that because that's one of my points in my speech that I posted in Go React to give you an idea. That was one of my points. Okay, so this is a good counter argument. We've got on the left side, it says the best kind of energy, and on the right side, we're saying takes up a lot of space or needs a lot of space. That's showing that it's not the best kind of energy. So these are the opposing ideas. They're opposite. Okay, number three, it may be true that fossil fuels have a negative effect on the environment. And then we say despite that, it has... Um, I would probably use has right here. Notice because they used have a negative effect. So that means you want to use has a positive effect. And then we're going to say on industrial development. OK, yeah, that's kind of related because we're talking about environment industrial development okay I think that's good number four electric cars are environmentally friendly and then what's going to be our transition word let's do this one together however yeah and I'll put in here environmentally friendly however they use up too much electricity to charge their batteries okay so there's they're focused on the, being good with the environment but what about all this electricity that has to be generated in order to charge their batteries? That can't be good for the environment. Yeah. Okay, so we've got environmentally friendly on the left side, too much electricity on the right side. Okay, so there we go. Good job, everybody. We are done for today, so I'm going to share the homework with you. Any questions about this? No, teacher. Okay, how do you feel about your homework in preparing your own speech? Do you feel like you're ready to do that? Uh, how comfortable are you with this idea of your, doing your own speech? Let me know what you think. Are we good? Good. I think I have to write it more.
Okay, so you might need a little more help. Um, with my sale. By my yeah, sale. with yourself. And um, it's really good to listen to a whole speech from start to finish that has a counter argument in it and everything that you need. So um, the online workbook has a listening section and they do have some uh, speeches in there that you could go and listen to. And also I recorded a speech, a good example speech for you. So go in to Blackboard, look um, at the textbook assignment and you'll see a little link in there that says, you know, click on my video. And um, I, I recorded a speech for you to listen to, okay? So for your homework, you just need to finish page 53, 54. Um, so that's just the bottom of page 53 and the top of page 54 for homework. And prepare an outline of your argument speech. Use page 30 to help you remember the three parts of the speech, okay? So an outline means just the main things that you want to say. You don't need to write all of the sentences of your speech. Just kind of put your, your main idea and your three points your counter argument, okay. Um, I've already given you the topics earlier in today's lesson, but I also listed the pages where you can find the topics that you need to choose. Remember, you're just going to pick one of the topics that I listed in there um, in chapter two. So look under textbook assignment four and you will see the pages um, to find your topic on. And then do your listening challenge this week. So next week we'll give speeches. If you want to, you can give your speech on Monday in class. Or you can wait until Wednesday and do it. Or you can just go to Go React anytime next week and record a speech in there. Okay? You can do, it's just one speech, but you're going to re, um, choose where you want to do it. Either in Go React or in the class here in uh, Blackboard. Okay, any questions about what the homework is? No question. Teacher, I, I, I am a, a little confused. Yeah. Um, we are going to do two speeches, one, one for October 2 and other 